Thrilled to be joined by uh, Meet the Press moderator and host Chuck Todd. Chuck, thanks for spending some time with us today. Uh, tell me, first of all, right off the bat, what uh, drew you to uh, decide to spend some time with Senator Lamar Alexander on Sunday? Well, and, and, and look, I've frankly known and covered him all ever since I became an, an adult in this business going back uh, some 25 years. I mean, I, I, he, he uh, um, full transparency, sort of the person I worked for for 10 years was Lamar Alexander's longtime um, consultant. So I've had uh, experience watching Lamar Alexander's presidential campaigns um, from a front row seat, I was not involved with him, but we were watching them um, uh, quite closely and have seen him over the years. So um, I, I would think and it, it, it's something we, we certainly know each other professionally um, fairly well. And uh, he is somebody who I think does have his finger on the pulse of sort of where the mainstream of the Republican Party is. Lamar Alexander's entire political career, he has always found a way to be in what I would say is the mainstream, wherever the center of the Republican Party is. Well, the Republican Party has shifted quite a bit in the last four years, and it's been interesting to me to follow to see how has Lamar Alexander been able to find his center. And frankly, watching over the last four years, I think he has struggled to find his center. Chuck, you, you mentioned uh, his, his personality, really, the, the way he finds the center. Uh, uh, Alexander, his personality is not really boisterous yet. You get the feeling he's always near the front in, in, in uh, driving whatever the political uh, attitude of the moment is. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how he may have influenced some of the central moments in, in Washington, D.C. over the past 25 years? Well, I would say this, you know, he was, he's been quite close with Mitch McConnell uh, since he got into the Senate. You know, it's been interesting. Lamar Alexander, and he himself told me this, he's retired from politics three times, right? Um, uh, but the last retirement, the one in 2000, did seem to be like the one he was gonna, that was going to stick. I didn't, you know, I remember him saying for years he had no interest in being a United States senator. Then, of course, Tennessee Republicans desperately needed somebody to make the seat safe. Um, after, I think, Fred Thompson's surprise retirement. And lo and behold, um, they drew him back in. And when he got to Washington, he ended up getting quite close to Mitch McConnell, which surprised some people. But look, Lamar Alexander started his career working for another Senate Republican leader, Howard Baker. Um, and so, and he certainly believed in um, who himself had experience with Everett Dirksen. So he believed that's where you could figure out how to get things done. You know, it's it's he is somebody who has been among the governing wing of the Republican Party. So and I think his career has allowed him to be a little more. Um, he's had a little more of a shield from the right wing. I mean, Tennessee has got the Republican Party has gotten a lot more conservative. Um, I, I, Lamar Alexander of 20 years ago couldn't win a primary today. But because he built up enough goodwill in Tennessee, he was he was very helpful to Mitch McConnell to essentially get stuff done. Look, I would argue that in his 18 years in the United States Senate, the United States Senate has become less effective, not more. I'm not saying that that's Lamar Alexander's fault. This is a this is systemic. Um, the, where he's played the most important roles are making sure the government didn't shut down. He was one of the few Republicans that would join with Democrats to keep the lights on. Uh, he's, he, as you said, a power player there in Washington, D.C. That's kind of the way he was in uh, Tennessee as well, holding uh, many, many offices from governor to president of the university and this and that. It, also, in the, in the 90s, he ran for president. I remember his uh, slogan was, come on along, hearkening back to his uh, flannel-clad uh, trek across the state running for governor. What kind of president would Lamar Alexander have been if that had been his fate at that time? Look, he was, uh, I, I, think, I think it would have been very similar to George H.W. Bush, the president he worked for in the cabinet when he was Secretary of Education. I mean, it, you know, if you were to describe in today's language what, what he is, you know, um, somebody might say he's establishment, you know, and use that as a negative. I say it as just a fact, right? He was from that wing of the party, the governing wing of the party. Um, I think you would have seen a presidency that would have looked, um, so, you know, somewhat like George W. Bush and George H. W. Bush. Uh, I, th I think I could make a case that before George W. Bush made compassionate conservatism a thing, 
that Lamar Alexander was the one trying to do this. You know, as governor, you know, he was one of those, he, he, he had a reputation of reaching across the island, Tennessee. Now, it was back when, when Democrats were much more powerful back then when he was elected governor. But in that sense, he really was from the Ford Bush 41 school of governance. You, you run hard in elections, but then it's over and you just figure out how to govern. And if that means working with the other side, in fact, it always means working with the other side. So I think that is the type of, I do think it would have looked a lot like a, a Bush 41 presidency. Chuck, thanks so much for your time. We look forward to your talking with Senator Alexander on Meet the Press, 9 a.m. Sunday morning, right here on Channel 3. Thank you again, Chuck.